Matthew Monavon is the top receiver in college football. After playing two years for USC and his junior season for Oregon, he decided to declare for the NFL draft. How will the top college receiver pan out in the NFL? Let's find out. The first step for Matthew towards the NFL was the draft combine in Indianapolis, where he would put up the most bench press reps out of any receiver there, record a top 40 speed within his receiver class, impress the scouts with the 7th best broad jump, the 5th best 20 yard shuttle for a receiver, and of course showed his abilities that made him the number one receiver in college football last year. After his pre-draft interviews with different teams, Matthew was a projected mid-first round pick, and there was a lot of hype surrounding him. Deion Sanders even wanted to mentor the young receiver now that he wasn't playing against his Buffaloes in the Pac-12. Finally, Matthew got the call during draft night, and he was selected by the Green Bay Packers, as it was off to the frozen tundra he won. Matthew's first game in the NFL would be a tough one, as he was playing against the Bears at a rainy soldier field, and it was clear that either the weather, nerves, or both were affecting him early on. Matthew was also surprised to see that Teddy Bridge Bridgewater was somehow the new starter for the Packers instead of Jordan Love. This first game for Matthew wasn't without rookie mistakes as he would commit a costly penalty for his team here on first and goal, and that would end up backing them up to a very long third and goal that the offense would not be able to convert. Matthew was looking to make up for that penalty and would do just that as he would finally get his first NFL reception, and he would follow that up with another quick one to convert on a short third and four for the Packers. Two plays later, Matthew almost had the play of the game as he would go deep and Teddy would launch it to him as he got behind the Bears defense but it was just a tad underthrown. and later that possession Matthew would rack up his third reception as he looked like he was starting to get more comfortable out there on the field. Despite that the Packers still had yet to find the end zone today and hopefully if Matthew could keep making plays like this that might change on this drive for the Packers. And then on second and goal from the seven they would finally find the end zone to cap off this drive before halftime. Matthew wanted to start the second half out with a bang and that is exactly what he would do here as he would turn this simple drag route into his biggest reception so far of the game, taking it all the way down to the Chicago 20-yard line. But an inaccurate throw from Teddy intended for Matthew would end the drive there. Matthew was showing his team, though, that he could be effective in their offense, even without the ball in his hands each play by the way he blocked defensive backs. Matthew would make a huge block on this play and hold it long enough for Aaron Jones to catch the gap he created and take this play all the way to the end zone for a touchdown, as that touchdown would end up sealing the victory for the Packers here in Week 1, as Matthew had a decent stat line in his NFL debut, and he and his teammates celebrated their big rivalry win in the locker room. Things were looking a little bit different on offense here for Matthew in the Packers in week two against the Falcons as Jordan Love had been named the starter this week over Teddy Bridgewater. This was who Matthew was originally expecting to play with and even though it might take some time for chemistry to form together, he was excited about it. Jordan Love was making an effort to try to target Matthew early on here in the first quarter of the game but it was clear that Matthew was still adjusting to NFL defenses and sometimes had a hard time holding on to catches in traffic and of course this was Jordan Love's first first year starting for the Packers as well, so there were bound to be some growing pains this offense experienced this season. The deep ball chemistry is something the two of these wanted to form this season, as it would be a deadly combination once they finally did, but it just wasn't there quite yet. Thankfully, Love had no problem at all finding Matthew on short routes when they needed to pick up a first down, and Matthew would quickly rack up three receptions in the first half, as the Packers were still looking for their first touchdown of the day so far, but it would not come on that drive, as they would head to the second half with still only a field goal on the board for them. The offense really seemed to struggle to find any plays in their game plan that worked for them once they got near or in the red zone this week, but thankfully they were still staying in the game with their special teams unit putting up points and making other big plays on offense like this one to move the ball down the field. Once again, an inaccurate throw from Jordan Love to the end zone would bring up another fourth down for the Packers in the red zone, but this field goal would end up giving them the lead for the very first time, and as I say that, Anders Carlson would miss one and Matthew and the Packers were now down by one with less than a minute to go. Jordan Love knew that if they wanted to win this game, he had to get the ball into Matthew's hands to make a big play, but the defense was all over him this drive. Finally, he would break loose down the field and come up with a huge reception, putting them inside the Falcons' 20-yard line with this dime from Love, but they wouldn't have time for another play, and Matthew and the Packers would drop this one to the Falcons. After that loss, Matthew and Jordan Love worked hard the next week, and they were finally starting to build some chemistry together in practice as well. Hopefully, that would translate here in their home opener against the Saints. So far, it was looking like it would be, as Matthew was the first target that Love would go after today through the air, and despite his quick start, though, Matthew was still making some rookie mistakes and was a little too aggressive on this block and would get penalized for it. Thankfully, the offense still made their way down the field and Matthew was less than a yard shy from his first touchdown here, but on the very next play, he would finally get it. Matthew finally recorded his first career NFL touchdown, and even though it was a short one, we all know that size doesn't really matter. Matthew went right back to work on the next drive with his run blocking ability, and it was really helping his team out on offense. Head coach Matt LaFleur had finally realized how smart it was to keep feeding Aaron Jones the ball, and it was paying off as the pack 
Bears kept breaking off big runs. But unfortunately, they wouldn't be able to get a touchdown out of this drive when Jordan Love had to throw it away on third and seven. And after failing to get a touchdown there, the Packers were now down by four to the Saints. But that wouldn't last for long as Matthew would go across the middle and Love would find him with a perfect throw into coverage. And after one broken tackle, Matthew would take this one to the house. And we could definitely see the chemistry between him and Jordan Love finally starting to form now. But even with that big play, the Packers were still down by three headed into halftime. The Packers were going to get back to the ground game to start the second half since it worked so well for them in the first and Matthew's blocking continued to be a big reason for that success. Although him and Jordan Love didn't quite seem to be on the same page through the air to start this half, it wouldn't take long for the two of them to get back on track together as Matthew would pick up a first down and Foster Moreau would end up capping off this opening drive with a touchdown for them. The Packers were now up by one and with the way they were running the ball, it looked like they'd win this game as one more handoff to Aaron Jones up the middle would get them into the end zone and Matthew would get a victory here in his home opener all while putting up his best stat line yet. It was time for Matthew's first primetime game and they were at home taking on undefeated Detroit. The Packers came out the gate running the ball fast and hard as Matthew was still making key blocks for Aaron Jones but then Jordan Love got a little too aggressive trying to get the ball to Matthew and this promising drive would come to an end as he was picked off. Thankfully that didn't deter Jordan at all from trying to get the ball into Matthew's hands tonight as he almost had what could have been their play of the season yet on this attempt to the end zone but was just shy of being completed. Despite that the offense managed to finish off this drive with a Foster Moreau touchdown and then it was Christian Watson's turn to get in on the action as he would take this one across the middle and put the Packers up by 14 over Detroit. Jordan still however seemed to be having a hard time getting Matthew the ball tonight though but hopefully that would change in the second half of this game if the two of them kept making plays like this the rest of the night. Plays like this one wouldn't help them at all though as Jordan Love would end up throwing his second interception of the night to end this drive and Matthew was off to a sloppy start in the second half with a penalty on a third and one and that would end up resulting in a third down stop for Detroit instead of the first down they had originally picked up on the previous play. Matthew would head into the fourth quarter on a little bit of a better note at least as he would make back-to-back -back receptions for the offense and help move them into field goal territory on this one. But on the next third and six, Jordan Love would try to get him the ball once again but the Detroit defense would come up with a big time stop and after a missed field goal it was suddenly a tie game with the Lions here in the fourth quarter. I have no idea what Jordan Love was thinking with this deep shot on third and two when Matthew was wide open for the first down conversion but that would allow the Lions to take the lead until Matthew decided otherwise as he would beat his man coverage and take this one to the end zone for six. But somehow the defense would give up an even quicker touchdown to the Lions offense on their very next possession. So once again it would be up to Matthew in the offense to march down the field for a touchdown with less than 30 seconds to go to try to send this game into overtime. On first and 10 with two timeouts left Matthew would come up with a big reception and double coverage inside the Lions 10 yard line. And then what might be the play of his short career so far would be this catch in the back of the end zone to give the Packers a chance to tie this game up. I mean just look at this beautiful pass and catch. But of course our rookie kicker would end up missing the PAT and despite Matthew putting up a monstrous stat line this game, his team was only 2-2 two and two so far on the season. Matthew Monavon started his NFL career last episode and was drafted by the Green Bay Packers and today we're continuing his career. Through the first four games of the season his team was sitting at 2-2 two and two, but hopefully we could change that here through the next couple of weeks. Despite that Matthew has been putting up very solid numbers as a rookie receiver so far this year, but that hasn't stopped the Packer fans from calling him out on social media. They've been clamoring for him to change his jersey number from 12 to another one that wasn't Aaron Rodgers' old number. So not wanting to piss off the Green Bay fans, Matthew obliged and he would change his jersey number to number one. Hopefully this isn't going to change how he performs on the field. We'll see how things go for Matthew this week as he was taking on the Raiders in his new uniform number and early in the first quarter, things were not looking too promising for him so far. Jordan Love was having a hard time connecting with him but would finally find him on the slant route across the middle and would go right back to Matthew again on an out route to pick up a first down to keep this drive alive. Matthew would show his football IQ here as he would deviate from his route to find the open zone in the defense which would help Jordan Love avoid taking a sack and that would allow for Aaron Jones to finish off this opening drive with a 10 yard touchdown run. Matthew had a chance to put the Packers up by two possessions here but once again Jordan Love just didn't seem to have the accuracy when trying to connect with Matthew. That wasn't going to stop these two though as Jordan kept going back to Matthew as much as he could with the ball and finally he would find Matthew wide open in the end zone with a perfect pass to him as that would be Matthew's fifth touchdown in only five games so far. The Packers would now only need one more first down to secure the win against the Raiders and after Matthew picked it up for his team they would walk away with a victory in week five. Following that win Matthew and his team had a bye week and the offense made sure to put in a lot of work in their off time and it sure seemed to pay off for them as they started week seven off with a bang against Denver as Aaron Jones would take this one 53 yards to the house to start the game. The offense continued their hot start to the game as then Christian Watson would find the end zone for the 
Packers, and Matthew would end up being less than a yard short on this play of finding the end zone himself, but Jordan Love would end up throwing an interception on the very next play. Matthew was now looking to get his team down the field for some more points this drive, as they didn't want to miss on another opportunity to go up by two possessions over Denver. On third and three, Matthew had what looked like a wide open first down, but would somehow drop this pass, but he would make up for it on the very next play, as they would go for it on fourth down, and he would pick up the first. All of that did not matter, though, as the offense would not be able to pick up the first down on this third and six, and sure enough, we would end up missing the field goal before half, and to make matters worse, Aaron Jones would break off another huge run here that he would end up taking all the way to the end zone, but Matthew got a little too aggressive on one of his blocks and would get flagged for it and the touchdown would be called back. He would try to make up for it though by picking up this first down pass in traffic across the middle of the field, which would help lead the offense down the field for a touchdown that possession. Once again, Matthew would pick up one more first down for the offense when it was needed most here late in the fourth quarter as the Packers would run out the rest of the clock to pick up their second victory in a row. Matthew and the Packers were now looking to make it three wins in a row this week at home against Minnesota, and Matthew was off to a hot start picking up two receptions on their first drive. But by the second quarter, the Packers were down by three, and Matthew had been pretty quiet since that opening drive of the game. That made this third and nine crucial as they needed points badly, and Jordan Love would find a wide open receiver in Matthew who would take this down inside the five yard line. And on the very next play, Love would go right back to him in the back of the end zone as he would make this incredible toe dragging catch to give the Packers the lead back before halftime. The defense would come up with a huge stop against the Vikings, giving their offense one more chance to score, and Matthew did his best to try to get the offense down into field goal range with no timeouts left for them to use, but the Packers would end up headed into half with only a four point lead. Matthew and the offense had been pretty quiet throughout the entire third quarter and now found themselves trailing by three points here in the fourth. They had managed to work their way down into the red zone, but on third and goal, Jordan Love would almost throw what could have been the game ending interception in the end zone. And so after settling for a field goal to tie it up, the Packers had one more chance to win this game. Then the dagger came on first and 10 as Matthew ran a crossing route with Romeo Dobbs who became wide open for the touchdown and that would seal the deal here for the Packers as they made it three straight wins. Matthew and the Packers were looking to close out the first half of the season strong, but it would be tough to do that today as they were taking on the Rams in some wet and rainy conditions. Just like last week, Matthew was off to a hot start on their first drive of the game and these weather conditions didn't seem to be affecting him at all so far today or the rest of the offense either as they would score with ease on their first possession. Things did seem to cool off for Matthew and the offense however though throughout the second quarter, but it didn't take long for them to get right back on track as Matthew would come down with his eighth touchdown reception of the season and that would complete his rookie contract goal set for him by the front office. The Packers front office definitely had high expectations for Matthew coming in as a first round pick this year, but I don't think they expected him to perform this well so quickly. The same could be said about the rest of the team as well, and thanks to Matthew's great play so far this season, the Packers were tied for first place in their division. Halfway through his rookie season, Matthews put up great numbers and he was on pace to be one of the best receivers in the league this year, and upgrading his catch into a 90 and short route to 78 was only going to help that cause. Matthew and the Packers were back on the road and taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers as he would already have two receptions on their first drive, and for his third one, Jordan Love would find him in the end zone for a touchdown, as Matthew couldn't ask for a better start to this game. He would keep racking up the receptions and receiving yards on offense, and was doing his best to try to help the offense keep moving the ball down the field in tough situations. They would get into the red zone and decided to try to pound the ball in on the ground, and even though Matthew would get subbed out here, his team would still have a seven point lead at halftime. They would come out of the gate swinging right away to start the second half, as Matthew had a chance for a touchdown here, but had some miscommunication with Love. Even though they didn't get the touchdown, they still got some points out of it, and those points would be enough for Matthew and his team to get the win in Pittsburgh. It was Matthew's first time getting to wear the throwbacks in Green Bay, and he seemed to be performing well in these new uniforms for him. On first and goal, the Packers would cap off this drive with a touchdown, and Matthew was hoping to help get his team down the field and into the end zone again this drive. While Matthew is much more of a possession receiver and not the shiftiest of players, it was cool to see him slip this tackle here and fight for some extra yards. Headed into the fourth quarter though, the Packers were now down by a touchdown and things weren't looking good for them, as the Chargers had done a pretty good job of holding Matthew pretty quiet in the second half so far today. But now that it was clutch time, he was starting to heat back up again for the offense, and with only three seconds left though, the Packers would only have one option left, and that was a Hail Mary, as Jordan Love would launch this pass deep into the end zone, but it would fall incomplete, and the Packers' win streak had finally snapped here at home. Despite the loss, the Packers were still tied for the division lead, so that made their Thanksgiving game against Detroit even more important. The Lions had already defeated them at home earlier this season in overtime, so they currently held the tiebreaker over the Packers. That didn't quite sit right with Matthew though as he wanted to win the division, so he came out today and was doing everything that he could to help the Packers get a win, as both him and Jordan Love were finally starting to get used to each other's tendencies at this point in the season and were locking in together. Of course though, not all plays for this duel would be perfect, but hey, they still had the lead headed into halftime. Matthew and Jordan were driving the 
the ball down the field on their first second half possession with ease against the Lions defense. And Matthew would have a chance to seal this drive off with a touchdown here, but would take a hit and not be able to hold on to the ball. So Jordan Love would go right back to him again, and he would drop the ball again. But third time is the charm, as there was no one on him here, and I really couldn't believe this. Just look how wide open Matthew was. That defense would sum up this game for Detroit, as Matthew played fantastic in his Thanksgiving debut. And to celebrate his team having the division lead now, Matthew hopped on Superstar Showdown, where we were going to try to grind out a win here, and possibly get some more skill points to upgrade our attributes. I'll be completely honest and tell you I have yet to win a single match on this game mode, but Matthew has definitely developed a lot since the start of the season, so maybe things will be a bit different this time. Maybe not though if Lamar Jackson keeps selling us out with throws like these though, but at least our opponents Lamar Jackson seem to be selling him out too though. And I can't make this up as this was just becoming a match of who could get the most interceptions this game from Lamar Jackson, so we needed a touchdown badly this drive and Matthew would clutch up and deliver one for us. But our opponent would march right down the field and get a touchdown of his own, so that meant we needed a touchdown this drive or we would lose for good and once again Lamar Jackson would sell us out with an interception and I am still winless in Superstar Showdown. At least we got a skill point though and with two skill points in total to use we would upgrade short route running to an 84, add short route elite bronze tier, and equip silver sticky fingers to our ability loadout. Matthew Monifon was a top receiver in college football and after being drafted by the Green Bay Packers has started to become one of the best NFL receivers and with his team currently sitting at 8 and 3 he was hoping that he would be able to help his team close out the regular season and clinch a playoff spot in his first ever season as an NFL receiver. Tonight's game against the Chiefs would be a good test for them as they were one of the top teams in the NFL and so far the young Packers team was holding their own against them. Jordan Love was really starting to impress the organization with the development they've seen in him this year and Matthew was definitely happy that he was getting to play with Jordan Love as a starting quarterback instead of Teddy Bridgewater who started the season for the Packers but no offense to Teddy Bridgewater though by any means of course. Despite all the praise they had for Jordan Love in the offense they just couldn't seem to get it going tonight against Kansas City and even though Matthew would come down with his first touchdown reception of the night late in the fourth quarter to cut into the Chiefs lead it wouldn't be enough as Mahomes and the Chiefs would get the win here in Lambeau. Matthew and the Packers would have another primetime game the following week as they traveled to MetLife Stadium to take on the New York football giants as Matthew was off to a really slow and quiet start this game. His first reception would not come until right before the two minute warning in the second quarter for him and that would be his only catch in the entire first half for him. It wasn't until the fourth quarter that he finally started to heat up as Love would find him for a touchdown and then he would come through when the offense needed it the most and would work his way open for Jordan to find him and convert on a long third and 15 to keep this drive alive which would ultimately help the Packers win this one at MetLife. Matthew and the Packers were back at home this week and were taking on the Buccaneers and both teams decided to have a throwback week as this was a pretty sick uniform matchup in Lambeau. Not only that but Matthew was off to a fantastic start on the first drive as he had already racked up four receptions from Jordan Love so far this possession and would end up capping it off with his fifth one as he would get the first touchdown of the day for the pack. At this point Matthew was on pace for double digit receptions this game against Tampa Bay and that is something he or any receiver on this team has yet to do so far this season so it would be a really big milestone if the young rookie could do that this game and with it only being halftime against the Buccaneers it was looking like it would happen today as he would come down with his eighth reception from this acrobatic throw from Jordan Love to avoid a sack on third down. On the next third down Matthew would come down with reception number nine and touchdown number two as he was now one reception away from double digits. It would finally come for him at the start of the fourth quarter and after putting up a final stat line of 11 receptions for 117 yards and two touchdowns, Matthew would help lead the Packers to another victory here at home. Back on the road, Matthew was getting to work right away on offense as he'd pick up the first touchdown of the game and then he wouldn't get a second reception until he would save Jordan Love from what should have been an interception and turned it into a second touchdown. Just like the Giants game two weeks ago, however, Matthew would then be quiet and not have any receptions until the fourth quarter and at this point his team really needed his help on offense to try to get the lead back from Carolina. This was not a team that the Packers should be losing against and Matthew had to continually bail them out on third downs like this. On the next third down he found a break within Carolina's coverage and there wasn't a single defender within a 20 yard radius of him on this touchdown as that would be what the Packers needed to get the win and help move them up to the first seed in the NFC playoff picture. It was a division game as Matthew and the Packers traveled to Minnesota to take on the Vikings this week and the Green Bay offense would take up almost the entire first quarter on their scoring drive but nearing the end of the first half would find themselves down by a possession to the Vikings. So Matthew was making quick work of the Minnesota secondary to help move his team down the field before halftime and their drive would be capped off with a touchdown pass to Aaron Jones out of the backfield to tie it up at 14. The Vikings would strike first though in the second half and the Packers would find themselves back down by a possession but Matthew would end up changing that for his team as he would get his first touchdown of tonight's game. At the start of the fourth quarter the Packers would finally take the lead back but now being down by three 
they needed a miracle, and yet again, Matthew Monavon would deliver as he would beat the Minnesota Vikings defense deep and take this one to the house for a touchdown. As once again, a last second touchdown for Matthew would help give the Packers a huge win. The Packers were 12 and four headed into their final game of the season, and it would be a good one as they were at home against the Chicago Bears. Last time they were in their throwback uniforms, Matthew went off for double digit receptions against the Buccaneers, and I'm sure he was definitely hoping for that today again against his rivals. The Packers were moving the ball down the field quickly on their opening drive, and Matthew was just a yard short of a touchdown, but after that was relatively quiet from then on until the third quarter when he would come down with his biggest reception of the game so far. Matthew would help pick up a key third down for the Packers to keep their drive alive, and then in the red zone was once again just a yard short of a touchdown against his rivals, but he wasn't sweating it because he knew his team would find the end zone regardless just as they did here. And Matthew would end the season with a huge victory against the Bears, as well as leading the league in all reception stats as a rookie that in turn earned him NFC Player of the Year and NFC Rookie of the Year, with his quarterback Jordan Love finishing fourth in MVP voting and his team locking up the one seed in the playoffs where they would take on the Saints in the divisional round at home. Before that, we would make some upgrades adding plus three to catching traffic and plus three to medium route running and would finally unlock an X-Factor ability slot where we would add the max security X-Factor to Matthew's ability loadout. And now the rookie was ready to lead his team into the playoffs here at Lambeau as Jordan Love would try getting the ball to Matthew early on in the game, but they weren't able to connect. But the run game was working great for them on the opening drive as Aaron Jones would take this one 30 yards all the way to the house for a touchdown to put them on the board first today. It wouldn't take long for Matthew to get his first reception of the day, and it was a spectacular one as this pass was tipped by the defender, but Matthew would maintain focus and still come down with it. On third and 12, Jordan would go to Matthew, but he would be just short of the first down, but the drive would stay alive as Matt LaFleur was being aggressive and going for it on fourth down, as he would do it again with a QB sneak inside the 10 yard line, and it would pay off for them as the Packers would get another touchdown. The Saints were doing a good job of hanging with the Packers offense so far in this game, so Matthew needed to help lead his team down the field for more points again on this drive, and if he was able to keep coming down with the receptions at the same rate in the second half as he was in the first, he would end up with a double digit reception game for the Packers in his playoff debut. That wouldn't mean anything though if the Packers didn't get the win to move on to the NFC Championship, so Matthew locked in and would get his first touchdown of the day on this play, as that would put the Packers up by 10 over the Saints. After their defense came up with a huge stop, Matthew would get his 10th reception on this play, but he still wasn't done as he would come down with catch number 11 and touchdown number 2, and Matthew was super stoked after that touchdown as he knew his performance helped send his team to the NFC Championship game where they would be hosting the San Francisco 49ers. Matthew and the Packers were one win away from the Super Bowl, and all that stood in their way was one more game against the San Francisco 49ers today. Matthew was hoping to have the same success this week as he did last week against the Saints. If he could rack up a double digit reception against the 49ers today, as well as two touchdown receptions just like like this one, the Packers should find themselves in the Super Bowl next week. Matthew and the rest of the receiver core were doing their part in the run game as well, as with great blocking on this play, they would help set up this 73-yard touchdown run for Aaron Jones that would put them up by 11 points. And then right before halftime, with one more chance to add some more points to the board, Matthew would come down with this reception to get them into field goal range, where they would tack on three headed into the locker room. The 49ers were fighting their way back into this game though, and were only down by one possession now, and thankfully that fumble by Matthew was reviewed and overturned but the Packers would still have to punt anyway. The defense would come up with a huge stop and it would be Aaron Jones again coming up with a big run to take this to the house for six. And while he didn't get double digit receptions this game, Matthew would end up coming down with two touchdowns in this matchup today as his team would take this one 38 to 17 over the Niners and would be facing the one seeded Ravens in the Super Bowl. This was the biggest game of Matthew's whole career as he was in the Super Bowl as a rookie. This whole season has led up to this point for Matthew as the top rookie receiver in the league. He has been developing very well this entire season and hopefully is to a point where he can help lead his team to a Super Bowl victory in tonight's matchup, as Matthew was shown it would be possible with this play here and would come down with his first career Super Bowl touchdown. Matthew was certainly hoping that he would come down with a few more of those in tonight's matchup against the Ravens, as well as a win, as he was definitely helping make a difference on offense tonight for the Packers so far. They were back in the red zone again, but this time it would be Christian Watson coming down with a touchdown reception, and all of a sudden the Packers were up 21 to 10 over the Ravens now. If Matthew and the Packers offense could keep moving the ball down the field like this the rest of the game, there was a legitimate chance that they could become Super Bowl champions after tonight's game. Then Matthew would come down with what might be considered the catch of his career so far because the rookie's second touchdown reception of the night was enough to secure the win for the Packers as they were Super Bowl champions. What a way for Matthew to end his rookie season as he would solidify himself as one of the best receivers in the league tonight.